Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. Now we're going to do the last part of Chapter 7, Alkenes Part 1, and this is Catalytic Hydrogenation. So in this one, we're just doing a quick, it's really quick this video, it's a, a, there's a little bit of theory to learn, but really the brunt of what we're going to learn now um, is going to be carried forward into the next chapter where we learn about alkene reactions. So this one happens to come up in, in, in uh, the introduction to Alkene Part 1, but it really just it continues into the next chapter, okay? So this is just like an introduction. So the first thing I want to talk about is the theory. Now, catalytic hydrogenation is really just an idea of what we already talked about where you have an alkene, you treat it with H2 and palladium, and you get an alkane. So we already know what happens from catalytic hydrogenation. Um, and But what we want to do is a little bit more detail about it in the sense like, for example, I want to explain how this kind of happens. The reason why you need palladium, and by the way, it could be palladium, it could be platinum, it could be nickel. They all do the same thing. These are all surfaces in which the H2 is going to be attached to. So imagine if you have the surface of metal, right, some kind of metal, and sticking off of it are a bunch of H's. And so you have these H2s, right? Right now they're H2 connected to each other. Um, there's a whole bunch. And now an alkene comes by, and let's say there's an alkene and it travels over to that area. So here it is. It comes over and it drops down into this position. As it comes close enough, and by the way, this mechanism is just a visualization. Next semester we'll learn a lot more about the details because it's it's a lot of steps that about what I'm showing you. Um, but not something we need to know right now. But basically what happens is this alkene is going to come by, it's going to drop down and pick up the H's and leave. And because, notice how I'm dropping down, this is showing that the H's add to the same side, right? Because notice how if let's say this red carbon and this uh, blue carbon, or let's say green carbon, or to, you know, be associated with each other, when it drops down the red and the green carbon are both connected to the H's from the same side. That's known as a sin. This is called a sin addition. Meaning sin for same side. So they both are gonna add, those H's are gonna add on the same side to the alkene. So this has some stereochemical consequences, which I'm gonna show you right now. But this is how it works. It comes by, it picks up the H and it leaves. Now, because this is a large metal surface and there's a whole bunch of H's, it doesn't matter how many double bonds you have because they're all going to disappear. Same thing with alkyne. So alkenes and alkynes, alkene and alkynes, will, will both react. And they become alkane, right? So, for example, if I have, let's say, a structure like this, or a structure like that, or a structure like that, right? So all f these right here, when they react, in all cases, there's five carbons, so five carbons, uh, one, two, three, four, five, yep. So they all react with H2 and palladium exactly the same way. They just become a five carbon system. So it doesn't matter because they're going to drop down and just add all across any pi bond, whether it's triple bond or double bond or two double bonds, they all become the same thing. And there's no controlling this. There's no control. It's all or none. It's It comes in and it, boom, it, it goes and completely gets reduced down to an alkane. Okay, so let's talk about the stereochem for a moment, the stereochem. So imagine, and the best way to do it for now is in a ring. We'll learn more afterwards, but let's say we have this right here with H2 and palladium. Because this is a sin addition, meaning that the H's are going to add from the same side, that means that the answer is going to be sin, where if an H adds here on the wedge, then it must be over here on the wedge. Now, what does that mean for the methyls? Well, if the H's are on the wedge, then the methyls are in the back, right? So methyls in the back methyls in the back. Or the H could have came in from the back and then the methyls on the wedge. So these are the two possible answers. See that? But what never happens is where you can have an H add from a wedge and then another one from the back. That would never happen 
at all. This one here does not occur. Okay, so I'm going to put an X on that. Nope, doesn't happen. Because the H's must be on the same side. H's must add to the same side. And that's the only way they add. Okay, so this is hopefully clear. So the stereochemistry is what's called a sin or same side addition. Okay, that's the key here for this reaction. Now, this is all good in, you know, to learn. And like I said, we're going to learn so much more about this when we go over Chapter 8. But there's another point that we want to make. Alkynes have some unique reaction characteristics. So an alkyne, let's say you have an alkyne like this, and you were to treat it with H2 and palladium. Then no surprise, it's going to go and become an alkane. But it turns out that you could take an alkyne and treat it with what's known as a partial reducer, partial hydrogenation, where this alkyne will only take two H's into it and not four. See, right now, to get the triple bond down to a single bond, you have to have two H2s, four H's, right? But here, if I write Linlar, this is a special catalyst that's known as a partial reduction. And this applies to alkynes. Alkenes don't do this because alkenes are only reduced once. There's no more reduction after that, right? You can't add H's on more than once. But here, this is known as a partial reduction, where if H2 comes into this one, it adds sin, it's a sin addition, but it goes and stops at the alkene. So for example, here we would have H's adding above, and that means that if this is up, then this is up. That's sin, right? They both have to add on the same side, and that means that these methyls get pushed down. See that? So this gives us a cis alkene. Now, an alkyne can also react with another reagent, which is known as liquid ammonia, Na, sodium, and liquid NH3, liquid. Now, you don't have to worry about the mechanism. We'll talk more about this in Chapter 8. For now, I just want you to know what happens. So, this alkyne with NaNH3, and by the way, let me just make sure this is clear. This is liquid, okay? Liquid NH3. What happens is that it adds H's onto it, but it does it, instead of sin, it does it anti. Anti means opposite side. So, now an H adds above and an H adds below or vice versa. This is a trans formation. So if you take an alkyne, you could treat it with a H2 palladium or platinum or nickel, and it'll just go ahead and bring it all the way down to an alkane. The same thing with alkene. But if you take a partial reduction, either H2 and Linlar, it's a special catalyst, or NH3, then these two are going to go down to the alkene, not all the way. It goes to an alkene, and in and Linois' case, it's sin, or it's a cis alkene. But in this case, NaNH3, it's a trans alkene. You make a trans alkene. See that? That's it. This is what we really need to know. The rest of what we're going to do through problem solving is either review of things I taught you very well, like IHD, and we'll go back to that now, and we'll do it through review, or we're just going to practice with this concept that I'm showing you here. Okay? So all you need to do is just scan through this last section. It's very simple. There's not much to it. We're just really um, learning a very basic idea here. But we're going to apply it to these problems. Okay? So you should pause the video and try the problems, of course, and then play it with me, and we'll go over it together. I'm going to start right now because it's such a short video. Okay. Now, the first one is what happens if this alkene gets reduced with H2 and palladium. Now, notice I wrote PDC. PDC is the same thing as palladium. Okay, if you see the word Linlar or NaNH3, then you know it's with alkynes, it does something different. But in this case, we're just dealing with palladium. Okay, so all that we're going to do is make an alkane, right? So the alkene becomes an alkane. So over here, what would happen? Well, the triple bond becomes single bond, and the same thing for those two. So the answer is just going all the way to the alkane. That's it.